What's up everybody, it's Chris Lee back with another United Destiny Entertainment tutorial. What I'm gonna basically be doing with this video is showing you guys how I set up OBS to do my screen recordings for any type of tutorials that I may be doing in FL Studio, Pro Tools, um, Photoshop, you name it. Pretty much anything that's gonna be to record the screen, you know, playing games or whatever the case may be. I'm also gonna show you guys how I set up the audio and how I root my audio. Now I'm gonna be doing this on a Windows PC, it's pretty much the same rules apply doing it with a Mac, but if I absolutely have to pull out my MacBook Pro and do another tutorial uh, to show you guys how to do it with OBS on a Mac as well as QuickTime, then I'll go ahead and do a tutorial for that as well. So hit the subscribe button for that. Also, if you're new to this channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to get more videos like this in the future. Let's jump right into it. All right, so first things first, what you wanna do is you go to Google, you wanna type in OBS, uh, studio, you want to go ahead and download this software as well as voice meter. Now, voice meter is not mandatory, I just believe that it's a great software to utilize in this process. Now, what you can you utilize with this broadcast software is basically if I decided to record, like, say, a podcast between me and two other people on like Google and, and Skype or anything like that, it will basically allow me to record multiple people. And then at the same time, record us all on camera and put them all on one screen while we're talking about a particular subject. Now, voice meter allows me to do the same thing. It allows me to take multiple inputs, audio input sources from either your recording DAWs or maybe YouTube or your mic inputs or whatever the case may be. And it allows me to record multiple people talking or multiple audio sources at once into one to create like a podcast or whatever the case may be two powerful uh two pieces of powerful software that i i believe everybody must have okay so all right so as you can see i have obs uh open and then you can see i'm recording the screen so you can see my background being displayed recorded as well as me on webcam okay so in the process Let's say we wanted to go ahead and get this set up. The first thing that you're going to do is likely when you open up this program here in the sources area, there's not going to be any video capture and screen capture things inside of there. So you want to go ahead and create one. So how do you create the source? You go ahead and hit the plus button. So what I'll do is I could turn the background off completely, but what I'll do is I'll go ahead and create a new one. So you want to hit the plus button. And say if we wanted to go ahead and create one for the background first. We'll do the background first. So you click the plus button and go ahead and hit display capture. After you do that, you want to type in um, game. We're going to type in game slash music. And that's going to be the title of it to know what you're going to be recording it for or screen capturing. So normally I'm doing it for gaming or music tutorials or Photoshop or video stuff, etc. You want to hit OK. Now, once you do that, the display is going to ask you, what are you what's the basically the dimensions or what are you trying to record in the process? We're going to be recording the display that I'm set to right now for my uh, system. Now, you may be on 4K system, you may be on a 720 system, anything lower than that. You just pick the dimensions that actually matches what you're recording on right now. So for me, this display is going to pop up automatically. It's perfectly fine. I'll hit OK. Now, so for the one that I just created, if you notice, here's the little box for it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the other one that I have. And there, there it goes, it disappeared. So this is the one that you just created. It's gonna be in a small box. Now what you wanna do is to make it fit. What I personally like to do, there's other options to go ahead and try to make it fit for the full screen projection. I personally don't like to use that because it makes it all big and make it look all crazy and out of whack. So all I do is just grab it at the corner here and I go ahead and drag it out. And I dragged it out. Now this is recording that entire display of whatever is on your computer screen okay so in the process boom you're probably thinking oh man where did he go he disappeared well i didn't it's just like different layers just like it is in photoshop or pro tools or anything whatever layer is on top is going to be the layer that's actually up front in your face so how do i make myself pop up again well i take myself and i go to video capture which is me 
And I just put that on top. And boom, I'm right there again. Okay, so that's how you create the display. Now, you will be able to record FL Studio backgrounds, Pro Tools backgrounds, anything on your screen is going to screen capture, period. YouTube, it doesn't matter. Now, in the process, when you want to go ahead and create one for yourself, what you want to do is hit the plus button again. And then this time, we're going to go down to video capture device. And I'm going to put uh, instructor. Okay, for myself. All right. When you put in that, it's going to ask you what device are you trying to capture? Obviously, I have a webcam that's plugged into the computer. If you have anything else that the computer will be able to utilize to actually capture you as an outside source outside of the computer, then you go ahead and pick that. I'm using a quick cam orbit sphere uh, webcam. So I'll, you go ahead and click that and pretty much put a settings. I don't I don't do anything else to try to change anything. I like everything the way that it is. What you can do is if you want to make it look a lot better is you go into the actual software for the webcam and you adjust the way that you look inside of the webcam and then you can capture that and make that look best as you need to. Okay, so for right now, I don't have to touch anything. I don't have to touch any type of resolution devices, change anything. I can try to make it custom, but it's not even worth it. Just keep leaving it as is straight out of the camera is going to be perfect. So I'll go ahead and hit OK with that. All right, so if I cut this one off, video capture device of myself, then what you want to do in the process is if I decided, let's see if I, here, I'll tell you what, we can go ahead and do this. So if I decided to delete this one, say we remove that one, and I'll go ahead and remove this one as well. What you want to do in the process is just to go ahead <clears throat> and if we went to video capture device, I'm going to type in me, just hold down the alt button and then you just adjust it to the way that you want it. I want to go ahead and adjust that, which I'm doing right now. All I'm doing is holding down the alt button and I'm grabbing these little circles here and I'm just shortening down my window and I want this to be a little bit tighter and I want this also to be a little bit tighter okay and then you just go ahead and put that back down in the corner now if you want to size it down some again you go ahead and just grab the corner of it and you make it real small I'm going to hold down all again because I want this to be just a little bit more cut in I don't really like it that wide and that's about right for me. That That's good. I'm, I'm good with that. So in the process, this actually looks really good for me. This is something that I will be willing to do, uh, utilize for any time I need to record and capture the screen. So it's recording right now. It's getting everything that I need uh, in the process. Now, that's when you are just setting everything up. Now, before you hit the record button, what I like to do in the process is I personally go in and then I go down to general and I change my theme to dark. I personally like dark. Now, if you change it to something else, which I don't like, um, you see you have different options. You just choose whatever you want. Okay, I don't mess around with any of, of the other settings. I leave them as they are. Then you want to go down to stream. If you're going to be streaming anything, then basically you want to go ahead and change your streaming type. Um, if you if you want to use streaming services, then go ahead and utilize whatever you use. If you use like Twitch or streaming to Facebook, if you're streaming to Facebook, YouTube, whatever the case may be, then you go ahead and just use your option. I personally use YouTube, um, but I don't always stream. So in a process, you don't have to change anything else. The most important ones that you want to worry about is this one here, output. Now, I can't do it right now because I am recording, but you want to go to your output mode and you want to make sure that you change that to advanced. You want to go to the recording type. You want to go to the recording tab and then you want to make sure that the output mode is advanced. Keep it on advanced. Standard, keep it at, on the type, keep it at standard. Don't change that. Now, your recording path. 
you'll be able to hit browse. I can't do it because I'm recording. You want to go ahead and put your recording path to like a, uh, either external hard drive or some a hard drive where you're going to have extra space um, because you're going to be saving all these videos. So in the process, just know where you're saving it on a recording path. That's where all these videos are going to be saved. Okay. Now the recording format, I recommend everybody use MP4. The, this is going to be the most easiest for the majority of all your video programs, editing programs to, to read. And basically, if you use FLV or whatever the options are, the other options are, you will have some issues into being able to get some of those video files to play in every video program. So I just recommend MP4. It's best in this situation. Also, the files aren't that big and they're still high quality. Now, audio track. You can basically decide how many audio tracks that you want here. That's really up to you, personal preference. Nobody can really tell you how you want to do it. If you want more audio tracks, then I'll go ahead and show you that here in, in a minute. Like I said, for my encoder, I'm using um, uh, NVIDIA. So you want to make sure that you use that encoder. If you have like a graphics card, GTX, you know, GeForce, whatever the case may be, use that one. NVIDIA H.264 is perfect. Rescale. Um, I'm keeping it the same 1080p because I don't want to change. I don't want to change it. You know, it works perfectly for me. Also, in the process, I'm leaving the rate control at CBR. And then for me and my personal computer, my bit rate is set to 60,000. Uh, that's perfect for me. So when I go ahead and record my game captures or anything, there is no uh, skipping or lagging or glitching or any of that. That's the best setting for me. If it doesn't, if 60,000 is too high, go ahead and change it to like, 20,000, 25,000. Play with the numbers. See whatever works best for your computer, and that's kind of how you'll figure that out. Everything else you don't even have to worry about. Use two, pass encoding. Go ahead and make sure that that's clicked. Next tab we want to go to is audio. Audio, I personally use 160. You can use 192. You can use 320. You can use whatever you need to use in a process, but just know that the higher the number, the the higher the quality the better the quality so once you do that you just want to go ahead and make sure that you apply uh apply effects on every one of these you just want to make sure that you hit apply and anything that you change is going to apply that my sample rate i keep it at 48 because i like to record in 48 on my computer so i try to use that in sync for the clock source with all my programs across the board all right in the process you don't have to mess with anything else video now your base canvas your base canvas resolution for the video like i said whatever your computer is capable of recording in uh then you kind of decide based off that and whatever you want your output scale to be then you either put that at 1080 or you know 4k or 720 whatever the case may be totally up to you now for me on a higher end computer i like to have this lens i, I can't even say that name but 32 samples sharpen and scale sharpen scale and works best for me. But I've seen on other systems that are lower quality than mine. Um, I believe it was a 16 sampling uh, would be the best option. So just try that out. As far as the frames, go ahead and leave it at 60 and just hit apply. Everything else, you don't really have to mess with everything else. I don't recommend you touching it and the process. Just leave it as it is. Now, the other thing that I want to show you real quick is if you decide to uh, change your audio settings or control your audio settings from the computer, then you want to go ahead and hit advanced audio properties. Now, if you have any issues with this stuff, like only playing on one side, then make sure that you either try to down mix it uh, to a mono. And if it's the opposite, then switch it around. But just try to get you a stereo signal. My signal is being fed through voice meter. Okay, so in the process of that, let me see if there's anything else that I need to show you. Now, as far as the mic input, if you're not going to be using voice meter like I am, then I recommend you keep your channels in stereo, obviously. Uh, and then in the process where it says mic auxiliary audio device, just go ahead and select that. Once you click that and select that, it'll give you options to either use your uh, audio interface, 
whatever you have, whatever your mic source is, or your internal microphone. If it's your internal microphone, then go ahead and click that and then hit apply and hit OK. And, and then it'll give you the option to go ahead and see your audio being recorded down here. Now, real quick, I'm going to try to run through this really, really quick. Uh, just because this is the voice meter portion of it. If you are going to be using voice meter as your main source of audio, then what you want to do is you want to go over to the voice meter. Make sure that you open a voice meter banana. In a process, if you have to go to your computer and hit the audio devices, just right click and hit audio devices. Once you go ahead and hit the audio devices, you want to go to the playback. And then once you go down to the playback, you're going to have options for voice meter. Uh, input here you want to make sure that you select that one I don't have to do it right now in the process but if you ever want to play all your audio and have everything in sync I usually just leave it on voice meter the only reason why I change my settings is because sometimes I have to change my settings to work in different programs okay so in the process you just choose a voice meter and you hit apply or you hit okay then you go to the recording tab once you go to the recording tab as you can see my audio through the recording tab is going through my, my voice meter. This is the output source. So basically the output source is being sent to the programs to be the internal source of my audio. Okay, so check this out. Once you decide that you open up voice meter, you're going to see hardware input one, hardware input two, hardware input three. That'll give you the opportunity to have three different people recording their mic inputs while talking at the same time during a podcast. In a process, I don't recommend you mess with any of these settings. If you just want to see what this will do real quick, just to show you, I'll go ahead and show you. Listen to this. Very low. Listen, Listen to, to this. this. Very tinny. Listen, Listen to this. You, you can hear that, the way that it sounds. Very, uh, I guess, airport type. And listen to this. So I like to keep it in the middle, about right here. Not all the way dead in the middle. Because this is what it sounds like, which sounds pretty good. But it depends on the microphone that you're actually using in the process. I personally like it down here somewhere, okay? So now, while doing this in the process, what you want to go ahead and do is change your input to whatever your microphone is. Now, these are a bunch of different settings. I have personally found for my particular system that KS... Um, Fast track because I'm using the fast track ultra interface. So the your multi-channel in is gonna basically enable all your inputs on your interface to work. So whichever one you may be recording through, like right now, I'm recording through input two. Um it allows you to do that because I have my microphone set up for different things in my in my uh area in my space. So you just choose that option. If that option doesn't work or it's like, you know, choppy or anything like that, then go ahead and just try to pick a different option, whatever the case may be, whichever one works out for you. But I personally would stick with whatever your interface is and a multi-channel in. Same thing if you want to do two channels. Now, when you do this, it's going to basically show up as one channel at first. You want to go ahead and hit the mono button and it's going to make it into a stereo channel. OK, now. The next thing that you want to do, my virtual inputs, all my virtual inputs is going to come from whatever my output source is from my programs. So if you're recording tutorials inside of Pro Tools, then you want to go to the playback engine while having voice meter open. You want to go to the playback engine and you want to make sure that you change your playback engine to voice meter. Voice meter will then record the system audio from Pro Tools and allow you to record whatever your tutorials that you're doing, take that output audio source and import it inside of voice meter into this particular software here, capturing your voice as well as the audio at the same time. I really wish I can show you guys that during this video, but I don't wanna risk messing anything up, but that's exactly how it worked. So inside of Pro Tools, as well as FL Studio, as well as Logic or whatever program that you're using, make sure that if you're using voice meter, that your your source of your audio is changed to voice meter inside of that software and then this software will record that audio into this actual software to be able to record it to OBS and voice meter so keep that in mind now over here when you first install it you're going to have a different output 
source. Your output source A1, your output source is going to be one of, A1 is going to be one of your main ones. So your main output source in this particular case for me is ASIO, M Audio Fast Track Ultra. That's my interface. So whatever's coming out through my interface or going through my interface, audio is going to be played back through this software and then recorded into voice meter with no problems. Okay. If you have another particular source that you need to record at the same time, it don't matter if it's another program, another source coming from somewhere else, you may need to go to A2 and change A2 to whatever it may be, your TV, uh, your a different software, a different program, whatever the case may be, you just go ahead and select that. I personally, this, this fits best for me. Now, two things that I have in this section here, I have normal mode on all of them. And then I have this set to mono so it can make it stereo. And this one set as mono so it can make it to stereo as well. I know it sounds crazy and backwards, but that's just that's just the way it works. All right. So now in a process, what you want to do is this is what I love most about this. Say if my audio inside of OBS decides not to record or say if, you know, I, I need to record an external source and I don't have a. Uh, external microphone for my microphone on my camera it, 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 and, and it doesn't work and I need to basically try to record the audio whatever the case may be this allows you inside of voice meter banana to record a second source of audio just in case your other audio from OBS or any other program gets damaged if it gets damaged that's a-okay because this is now going to record it into its own folder so now when I stop this video I'm going to have audio for OBS and I'm also going to have audio for voice meter two separate audio so if one get damaged then I can use either or or you can use both to sync them up it really doesn't matter okay so in the process that's pretty much it it's going to ask you where do you want to save your voice meter recordings you do the same thing create a folder either on another hard drive external hard drive or the hard drive that you're using and save it there and it's going to pick it up okay now, in the process, um, after you're done recording your videos, I'll go ahead and show you this real quick. Let's go to the M. My M drive, I have OBS videos. These are all my OBS videos that I recorded. And here's my voice meter banana audio of all the recordings that I've ever recorded. In this process here in the past, you know, week or two weeks or whatever. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need to do. So again, in closing, if you're going to be using just OBS by itself, all you need to worry about having is to make sure that your uh, voice meter or just make sure that your OBS is recording your mic input. And then you're going to need to change whatever your settings are inside of your software uh, to whatever program or whatever your output is to go ahead and record that. Nine times out of 10, you won't have to, there won't be like an option for OBS. It'll just take the output source of your audio from your interface and use that as your source to go ahead and record whatever you need to record. If you use voice meter and, and the two together at the same time, you want to make sure that your outputs and your inputs are through your voice meter. You want to make sure that your hardware input is through your interface. If you record inside of FL Studio, Logic, or any of those programs, make sure that the playback engine and the output is going through voice meter. So you go on FL Studio, change it to voice meter. It's then going to record, play FL Studio music through voice meter, and then record it inside of OBS. Same thing with Pro Tools. So guys, that's pretty much it. I hope that this tutorial, tutorial helped you guys. I know it was pretty long, but I tried to give you guys as much information as possible. I really would have liked to keep this video at, you know, three minutes long or whatever. But some people just need a little more, you know, advice, a little more um, information about this stuff. Last but not least, if you are having any issues with things clipping or not being in sync, make sure that your kilohertz, 48 kilohertz or 44 one matches as well as um, your clock source is matching with your interface, the computer, and your audio recording programs, as well as voice meter and OBS. Make sure that they're all on the same settings. If it's 48 kilohertz, then run with 48 kilohertz on all of them. If it's 44.1, go with 44.1 on all of them. If you have any clipping or any type of um, you know buffering issues, then go ahead and raise the sample rate 
uh, higher if you need to, or change it from 256 to 512 or 1024, whatever the case may be. So guys, I really hope that this tutorial helped you. If it did, give me a thumbs up, uh, give me a like, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. If there's any other information that you may need, just go ahead and hit me up and I'll give it to you. Thanks for watching. Peace.